Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today and we are working on our vintage grunge journal. So I've been gone for a few days, went on a little road trip with my honey and uh, now I'm back and I'm trying to kind of get back in the groove and, and move forward on this project. So if you're just joining me for the very first time, welcome. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe and that way you won't miss out on any future videos. So I am in video number three uh, of a new project and I'm calling it my Vintage Grunge Journal. The first episode, um, the first video, I kind of went through my, uh, my process and uh, kind of what I wanted to do in this series. So it's gonna be a Vintage Grunge Journal. I've put together um, this kind of prompt list that I'm working from. And I'll put this, a link to this as a freebie uh, in the description. There was one in the last one, but I've added to it now. I've changed a little bit. So I will put the updated version. So even if you've printed it out, the first page is unchanged, but the second page I've added um, on number six. So I won't go through this whole thing, but in the first one, uh, first video was about the process and kind of getting started and my inspiration, which is a ghost town. So I had taken lots of pictures that I shared and then um, I've actually included a couple of those, um, and I think there's more than just these two. I've also um, included some of my favorite photos in um, the download, the free download, so that if you kind of just want to see where my inspiration's coming from, if you're doing one with the same theme, then maybe it's helpful to you too. So um, that will be there also. And then I had... Um, done some kind of sample papers for the cover that I did uh, for the book cover and I haven't um, I don't think I've made these available yet but I'm gonna uh, I've I know I've scanned them all and so I'm gonna kind of work on getting something in my Etsy shop um, in case you want to use these as backgrounds for anything so I'll have those there and then I'm gonna probably I still haven't done that but um, I had done some collages just with different materials of things I took pictures of. And um, I can't remember now because I've been gone for a few days what I put in the free downloads. Uh, but I'm going to be scanning um, different textures and things like that um, that will be available in my Etsy shop also. That's not done yet either. But I did, um, in the second episode, we went ahead and made the cover. And we used uh, recycled food packaging. And since then, I went on a little road trip, and when I'm gone, I have all this car time that, that I, I end up daydreaming what my next step is, what my next project is, kind of fine-tuning in my head where I'm going next. So I did a lot of that, a lot of daydreaming. And I also had the chance to watch a few videos. So one of the videos that I watched was Nick the Booksmith. Since I was going to be doing a hardcover book and I've never sewn in signatures into a book like this before, I kind of needed to maybe see what I was doing. So she happened to have a video for beginning bookbinding. And I thought, how perfect. I should have watched this before I built this book. So I kind of took what she... Um, had described, which is different than my how my cover is. Her cover, uh, when she did the beginner one, was the two covers and then a spine, and they were all separate pieces. And she showed you how to put everything in together. So I had already built it like this, so I needed to modify what she did into a way that I can still do a hidden hidden signature, you know, so that I don't have the them sewn in through my cover. So I kind of came up with an idea, and of course yesterday I was anxious to try it out and see if I could get it to work how I, uh, with covers that I had already made. So I think I mentioned in this uh, second video that I was going to be using coffee stain papers, and I put a link in that second video, and I'll do it again in this one in case you haven't started coffee staining papers. I'm going to be using... Um, that in my in my journal. So I you you could go ahead and kind of be working on papers that you did and I'll show you some of the ones that I have done already um, that's that are gonna go in my book. Now I didn't 
I haven't done a video yet on putting these in, so you can kind of let me know. You know, there's more than one way to do something. And I see people asking the question on groups and things. Um, if you like to decorate all your pages before you put it in your book and sew the signatures in when it's complete, or do you like to just put in your blank paper and then decorate it once it's in the book? So I don't know because I've never done this before, which one I'm gonna like. So I thought, well, since I've already started uh, pulling some of my papers together that I'm gonna use when I was cutting them to fit in my journal, I ended up with a small you know, piece that was perfect to fit in, in my little book. So I went ahead and put my little book together just for practice. So I decided that for my larger book, I'm gonna wait and not, there's some things I wanna do before they get sewn in, but I may sew them in and then finish decorating them once I get to a certain point. So I think that may be how I end up doing it. If you want to sew them in first and then decorate, let me know and I will do a tutorial quickly on how I, I put these in the book since we had already, I had already done the inside cover. So there's no um, book liner. I'm not sure what they call this, but the liner paper in here. So I had to, to kind of do a modification. I did find that if you're going to do any sewing or pockets, that sort of thing, then it's kind of nice to do all that stitching and everything before you put it in your book. So I've done a few in, I have three signatures in each one. There's a little bit of sewing and some pockets. So I did that first and then put it in the book. So let me know if you want me to do this tutorial on putting your book together. Um, otherwise you can craft along with me the way that I'm gonna do my larger book. So the first thing you need to do is start collecting your papers that you want to go into your book. Now I've used, um, I had already previously done a bunch of coffee stained paper and I've done some ledger paper in two different colors, some green and then this kind of um, gold color and they're both coffee stained. And then I did some graph paper that also has lines on the back, which I really like. So I'm gonna be using some of that. And then I also have somewhere, not in here. I got just some regular construction paper. Um, let's see, I have the cover for that. This is just Manila drawing paper. I got this at I think Office Max. So I just like the color of it, even when it's not coffee stained um, for my journal. So I am gonna use some of that. And then I also have, um, I love this um, because I'm going to do a schoolhouse part, part of my thing. I like this um, learning to write. I don't, I'm not sure what you call it, but paper. And so I'm going to use some of that. And then I had also previously uh, made a collage of uh, some vintage postcards that I had. I had just laid them down and scanned them in. And then I coffee stained them, which gave them this kind of washed out look. Since then, someone told me that there's a, you know, to, you can iron or heat set your, the ink on your copies before you coffee stain it will help. Or you can coffee stain some plain copy paper and then run it through your copier to print out whatever you want to print on it. But I kind of liked this washed out look. So I actually, I don't have very many pieces of this, um, but I'm going to, if I can find the one here I had, um, scan that in the one, I have one full piece, I think it's here, um, scan this into my scanner, just so I still, I can print it out like that or share that with you too. So in case you don't have um, vintage postcards. So I'll probably make some that's better than this and share that. Um, so that's going to kind of be my mixture of papers that I'm going to put in my book. So if you haven't done the coffee staining yet, um, I, I'll put the link again to how I coffee stained my papers, and then you can get some of those done ahead of time. Uh, the other thing that I will put in the description is, if I didn't mention it already, is a link to this entire series so that if you want to start from the beginning with me, then you can do that. So uh, let's see. Um, one other thing I just wanted to quickly share, I always like to show um, kind of organizational things because like I said, I'm new at this, so I'm always kind of 
organizing and reorganizing and finding things. I picked these up. They're little narrow little paper uh, uh, plastic bins. And I had been, I had a couple of the 12 by 12 size for scrapbook paper, but I didn't need that big of ones for eight and a half by 11 paper. So I bought a bunch of these at Walmart. They have them there now. Um, so I, I just, I bought them because they don't hold a ton, but for stuff like this one, I want to separate some of my hand painted papers or like these are all my coffee stain papers. They all fit in here nicely. And then when I get low, I can make more, but then I just kind of don't end up with too much stuff. And then it came with a little label to put on the front, but I have one of those little, um, label makers. So this way they'll stack and I can kind of have all my different kind of papers sorted. So um, that was just a handy little thing. So today what I do want to share is in addition to um, Nick the Booksmith's a video that I watched, and if I didn't say, I will put a link to hers because it's a perfect beginner bookbinding um, video in case you haven't done that. And like I said, I will show my modified version in another video either in the future or if you if you want to do yours ahead, just ask me and I'll go ahead and do that now. But today, I got up this morning and I uh, I'll always like to watch maybe a video when I'm on the exercise bike. And so I did that this morning and it was um, Tracy Fox is doing a series on a grungy journal. And I haven't watched all of them. I'm not sure where in the process she is, but today she kind of did an art class. She was an art teacher. So um, you can learn so much from, there's so many great teachers out there. So I will put a link to what she did today. Um, also in the description, it, it's what gave me my inspiration for what I am going to show you today. So I started out, um, it's, it's doing some jelly printing and she had another name, a frottage, I think it is, um, a French thing, a way of printing, um, textures, kind of like a pencil rubs sort of idea. So I, that's kind of where I started but I needed to evolve it to the project that I'm working on. So the things that she was doing, they didn't really translate exactly how she did them to what I was needing, but it gave me um, the idea to try something. So I've spent the entire day just playing with paint, trying to uh, kind of figure out some finishes that I could use in my journal. So I'm gonna show you some just quickly um, based on her kind of technique and then kind of just where I went with it today, which was totally different than what she showed. But I ended up doing some textures on my jelly plate. I haven't used this very much. So, you know, everything I do feels kind of like new, um, but I wanted to try it. And this was one of my very favorite ones, the way that came out. So I'll kind of maybe show how I did a few of these things. But it's just, I really wanted to get kind of frescoed wall looks like layers of paint over time. Um, and, and I really just kind of started out playing with um, her textures. What she did was she took um, different things like screen and anything with a texture. You know, some screen. This is like from um, or a bag of oranges, I think, something like that. And this is another one that's kind of more like a chicken wire kind of shape. This one didn't work out as well. This one worked out great. Um, I think it's actually potatoes and onions come in this one. Um, but then I had some rusty screen I tried. And then I tried, um, this actually worked out okay. And I might show you something with that. And I'm definitely showing with that. And then I had a piece because when I was making paper, uh, my husband gave me a went and bought me a roll of new window screens so that I could make my screens. And so I used some of that too. That worked out okay. And then I had some, some bubble wrap and I love this. I'll show you how this one turned out. This one was a really neat pattern because it's kind of an elongated bubble wrap, not like the little round ones. So that was neat. And then I had this, which is a paper crimper that's actually the handle's broken, but I've never gotten rid of it. But it had this nice ribbed pattern. And so I thought that might be fun and that worked pretty good. Um, she also used a scoreboard for stripes. I ended up forgetting I was had that out and ended up, I don't think, doing any with it. Um, but then this little tool is from my kind of distressing kit. I forgot I even had it. And 
I need to put it where I, I can find it because it's just like this little wheel and it, it makes kind of like, um, if you wanted to give the look, a paper, the look of like holes for stitching or something, you could run that along. I don't know if you can even see that. It made these little dimples. And then if you use your uh, inking and stuff, that would show up. So that is actually how I made this one, just rolling this wheel on my jelly plate and then printing it. So I'll show you how I do that. But these are just some different ones that turned out um, that I really liked how they turned out, but not for this project. So I'll just hang on to them for something else. This was just me playing kind of based on her video. Now in her video, uh, what she was doing was taking uh, the paint and putting it on the jelly plate. And I'll show you what she did. Um, and then these are just some of the different ones where I found I was having more fun doing my um, my textures and things on my jelly plate instead of rubbing them through. So maybe it's just that I wasn't quite as good at it um, as she is, but it, it's a lot of fun. So I, I encourage you to watch her video because it will you'll come up with some you know different patterns and things on your own, but. I tried some different watch gears and things. So I'm gonna kind of show you, these are the ones that aren't making the cut, um, but I am gonna save them, but they led me to this pile. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to give that old grungy mini layers over wallpaper, plaster peeling, that whole kind of thing. So these are actually on wallpaper pieces. And I just wanted the wallpaper to be in the background. So I used um, this, which has been discontinued. It's a uh, worn wallpaper pack um, by Tim Holtz Ideology. And I found I bought two packs of these when I did, and they come with 24 uh, five by eight pieces. And I ordered two, and I'm glad I did because I watched a video after this that he is discontinued. When he came out with his new things, this is being discontinued. So if you can get a hold of it, buy it now. Um, he is going to have uh, his new stuff has like instead of a whole thing of wallpaper, there's like these mixture packs, and the wallpaper are in those. They're just kind of in with the mix. So it's not that you won't ever find any wallpaper from him. It's just not going to be like it was. So. I took these and you can see this is actually this one because I wanted to make it more aged looking. So I'll show you how I did that. Um, and maybe on a different one, I'll pick a different one that I haven't done already. So maybe that one. Um, but this is also a wallpaper too. So these are all wallpaper because I want to have torn wallpaper and that kind of thing in my book. So I'll show you on this one. And then... I just wanted to do, I did some with the screen um, and just layers and layers and layers just to get it as grungy as I could. And I wanted to kind of work in neutrals. I had mentioned that I wanted to put a little rust in there. So, you know, you can never repeat exactly what you did, but I figured out a way to even give myself that water stained, um, that water stained look. And they're all kind of different. These were all done on book page because, you know, I'm still using up lots of book page. And then these I did on um, the hammer mill paper that I was using. I just love this paper. It's 32 pound paper. It's very slick. Um, I just like the weight of it. So I did some on this. And then the ones I'm going to do in front of you here on camera, I'm going to do on just some cheaper paper. It's 28 pound. It's better than copy paper, a little heavier, and it has some smoothness to it, but not quite as thick as the hammer mill paper. And it's just Penning Gear from Walmart is their brand. Um, and it's 28 pounds. So I'm going to be working on that today. But you can just see all the grunge in there. Um, in case you don't have a jelly plate or don't want to do this, um, I can scan these in and put them in my Etsy shop. So that'll take me a little bit, but I'll try to make a nice package. This one I'm going to show you too is with some gears, watch gear, clock gears kind of thing. And then I'll show you one where I did a little bit of lace, but I just love how that looks. So this was a lot of fun. It took me all day to get to the point where um, I was making all the other things kind of trying to do what she had done, but it, they weren't turning out for 
my project. I needed a, a different look. And so it kind of evolved me to this. Now this one, I made these a while back and I cannot for the life of me find what I did with this stencil. I think it's a stencil. I don't think it's a stamp. Could be a stamp, but I can't find it anyway. So I'm gonna keep looking. I, I thought I was more organized, um, but I really liked how that looked for uh, this project too, kind of that old wallpaper look. So I'm gonna keep looking for that. So I can't unfortunately show you how I did this because I can't find the stencil. So that'll be later. Um, and then uh, you remember I had printed out, um, or I had shown you in the last video some uh, some different things I was playing with on my Adobe Illustrator. I'm kind of learning that too. And I had taken um, a piece of wood and then I, on top of that as another layer, I had taken a photo and made, changed the opacity of the inside book liner of a book. I just liked the floral pattern. So I had shown this one before. I decided to play with the color a little bit. And this was just on a regular printer. And I'm mentioning this because if you don't do Adobe Illustrator or any kind of programs like that, but you buy some of my um, digital downloads on my Etsy shop, this is the way you'll buy it. Um, but you can even just alter that on your own computer. So if you go, um, I use a Mac, but if you go to tools and say adjust color, there's an option to a sepia line. So just by taking this and moving the sepia line to halfway, I got this color. So it's just a little more vintage looking and less color in it, a little more gray. And then if you take the sepia all the way to the far right, then you get this true sepia kind of look. So you don't have to know any fancy programs to do this. Your computer already probably has a tool um, just when you're clicked on an image that you can you can do this too. So I just wanted to show that um, in case you, it, it, maybe I'll pull my computer out if you need more instruction on that. Um, then I can actually put my computer here and show you. But I, I took those just to play around and I really love how this one turned out. And I used some lace and just painted that with my jelly plate right onto this decorative paper. So I'm just kind of playing still um, and just kind of sharing with you what I'm learning as I go. So I'll do a couple of these um, real quick here, I guess, just to kind of show you. And like I said, I'm just, I've cut some uh, of that Pen and Gear 28 pound paper, copy paper in half because my jelly plate is only um, five by seven, I guess. I need to get a bigger one, but you know, most of the stuff I do, I'm cutting it up anyway, so it's not a huge deal. So um, let's first play around with just anything because my goal today is just to show you how to get some of these fresco looks. So I'm gonna grab some paint here. And where's my roller here? So all you need really is a brayer and a jelly plate. Um, you may be able to do this on a glass plate. Before I got a jelly plate, um, I did play around with some things. It won't be the same, but um, you can you can try that if you don't have that. So I'm going to start out, I think, with a kind of a darker color. Maybe I'm going to show you um, kind of one of my favorite uh, ones that I, I was mixing. This Mermaid Paradise, which is kind of this blue. And I don't know how well it's going to show up in camera. It's kind of a maybe a tealish dark teal maybe and then a gray and this gray is just called timeless gray and these are just from apple barrel that I get at Walmart I guess so I'm going to show you just kind of one of these little layers and just put a little dab and another little dab today I actually took my time and I went and reorganized all my paints and I put the color on the top. I used to kind of storm this way, which isn't really a true, you know, color. So I actually took the time. So I have a little rainbow sitting over here now with, with color on all the tops. This is why I don't get anything done. I take way too long because I start organizing. So when I do this, I kind of just mix it and I don't want it totally mixed. Sometimes I do, and I, don't, I know I'm getting a glare here, so let's see if I can. Maybe get rid of the light totally. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. We'll try that. I know it's kind of dark, but 
the glare doesn't help. Okay, so I'm gonna grab just a piece of paper. Now, this is just not doing anything, um, which I'm gonna do because I want a grungy wall look. So just imagine somewhere down the line that wall is painted this color. I just put it down and then I peel it up. Now, because I'm doing grungy things, I'm not being perfect. I don't mind that there's like roller lines or missing. I haven't even been cleaning my uh, roller in between because I want as many layers of grunge as I can get. I like it when some's left around the edge because it'll pick up on another pull on a different thing. So now maybe I go with uh, the same one and I'm just gonna pull in maybe another color. So let's try just a little of this kind of, this is khaki. And I still have the blue in there and maybe I don't even want it everywhere. Just like that, where it's just kind of not everywhere. And then I'm gonna put my paper right back over it. And now you see, I have a second layer. And you can just keep going as many times you can put two colors, you know, whatever you want. So the next thing that I did, let's say this is as far as I'm gonna go. And you know what, I wanna do one more. I wanna do a dark gray too. Actually, before I put that down, I'm going to show you what another little tool that I used just for fun. So one thing that I did is I took this little stamp that's numbers, and it's from Tim Holtz, Stampers Anonymous. I'll put the link to Stampers Anonymous so you can find these too. But this is just a little, it came with a bunch of different ones. I kind of did a thing where I just started randomly going around. So it's not going to be perfect, but you actually see the numbers kind of come up. I don't know if this will be enough contrast since it was an afterthought, but we'll try anyway. Yeah, that did, came out a little bit. You can kind of see. So that's a neat background, you know, just kind of an added kind of steampunky kind of look. Okay, so for my next layer now, and I still haven't cleaned anything, this is kind of the trick part. Now, if you do, do let you, if you do this for an hour or two or whatever, you end up with paint building up on here. And depending on how long you take then to go back to your jelly plate, you might have paint peel off of here onto here. For this, I don't mind that. In fact, I kind of like it. Normally you wouldn't like that, but um, I actually kind of like it because I want it to look like the people did a bad paint job and there's chippy paint and, and it just looks really grungy. That was kind of what happened on, let me see if I can find the piece. I had one piece that it took me forever to finally, you know, go and put a, a final layer on because it was so grungy and perfect for so long. I didn't, I was afraid to, to go lighter with it. This one. I don't know if you can even see. This one was pretty dark color underneath, but there's lots of bits of black and things. And that's because it's it was actually dried paint. I was using my jelly plate to clean my finger off as I was coloring all the tops of my bottles. And it dried on there. And then when I went to use my roller, it peeled up. And I, I actually really love how that looks. So this is going to be antique parchment. And this is gonna be that last layer of white paint that's on the wall. You know, that plastery look. I kind of put a little bit too much maybe. So what you do when you put too much, like I kind of just did, is just um, use something else and kind of take it off. That'll be a, look, a, bat, a layer. Now you see how the gray 
that was still on my plate came off. See, I love that. So this will be great. I can do more layers or not. So I'll put that aside. And then I could either do a pull from this. Maybe I will just so you can see what it looks like to do just when there's a little bit of paint left on there. So you can see how it just put a little bit there. I just love that. Okay, but we're gonna do more because I wanna show you my trick for water stains. I need a tiny bit more paint. Get it everywhere. But see how you see all those lines and that kind of mess? I don't mind that at all. Okay. Now the trick is I took this little stamp that's like splatter. And this is again from Tim Holtz. I'm going to put it on my block. And then I used... Um, I used all three of these, Vintage Photo, Distress Oxide, Rusty Hinge, and then some Walnut Stain, depending on what my color of my paper was. So I actually figured out, rather than stamping this on, which is gonna look kind of fake, I want it to look like real water stain. So I'm actually gonna stamp a little of that onto here, and then I'm gonna go, if I haven't waited too long already, and it's gonna pull up some of my paint and leave that kind of look and then that's going to print and it's going to look way more authentic I think I let that dry a little bit before I pulled it but you can see the tea stain vintage photo I guess it is um, just like that little water stain I just love that okay I need more though because I let it dry while I was playing around, getting that stamp ready. So that's the nice thing about this. When you're doing grungy, you can just keep adding. You didn't like the first time, just do more. And if you need to change the color a little bit, you know, put more tan or something in there. But I'm gonna just go back again with my, my water splats. And I didn't even put ink on it that time. It'll give it a little bit different look. Oh yeah, I like that. Look at that. I just love how these look. I think grungy is my new thing. I just think it's so pretty. Okay, so that was how to do the water spots. I'm gonna do this wallpaper too, just how simple this can be. Now, you can use the same parchment, which I might, but I think I'm gonna maybe use a little of this. Let's see, beachcomber beige. I might do some of this first, just as another little layer. So uh, let's see. And maybe some water spots. So you, you can put stain on it sometimes or not. This paper is not quite the right size for here. But you could see because I didn't put the ink on it, if you can see that, it's more of a resist than that it shows the water stain. So I'm gonna do this next one with the water stain. So I'll use the parchment one. And I'm just gonna do that. And I should clean my stamp so that I don't get this paint onto my ink pad. So I'm gonna clean that off. I think the ink helps because it gives that water, that kind of water stained look. And this one I start from the bottom. So 
it just kind of, you see the wallpaper still through, but it just kind of fades it out. And I may actually want to go, that water stain may be too dark, so maybe I just roll over it and tone that down a little bit. So that's that one. And then to do the, um, the clock gears, I had this little uh, kind of a reverse stencil and I just put that in there. So let's see, I'm gonna use like a dark gray, I think. The other thing that's nice, I don't know if you can see this, is that wallpaper paper also leaves a little imprint. So I actually, if I had enough paint on there, I could do a pull from that texture too. But I don't think I have enough. Okay, and I'm not gonna cover that everywhere. And then I'm just gonna lay this down. Let's see, this way. And you can't really see that in this color, but it's there. I think it's gonna show up. Okay, I think I'll do it on this light one. That way maybe it'll show. Oh yeah. So that's just kind of a fun. I don't know if that'll go for my this book, but that I like that color combination. That's a fun background. Okay, that one, and then I want to show you real quick the lace. Since these are ones I ended up actually going to use. Let's see. I'm gonna do a color so you'll see some contrast. And then let's see. I like to mix them. It's probably too much paint. Oh, that's kind of nice. So you kind of just get it to a point that you like how it looks and then and then pull it off. And you see it, some of that gray came through too, which we're going for grunge, right? So that's good. So the next thing I need some contrast. So I'm gonna do um, some of this parchment again, antique parchment. And I'm just gonna do it on one side because my lace is just a thin piece. So I found if you touch it, you're gonna get fingerprints through there. So just use your brayer and roll it just to get the imprint. And that's not a very clean one, but you get the idea. And then let's see. I really only wanna pick it up on that side. I think I just smeared it, but let's see. Yeah, I kinda of smeared it, so it didn't come out very good, but you get the idea. So this kind of lace, because it's really open, worked out well. I tried this and it was just too fine. So these were the only two that I tried, but something that has a big open pattern, I think works better. So let me set that one aside. And then let's see what else. Oh, I wanted to show you this, this texture because this comes out really nice too. And this is kind of um, just like a weave, so a burlapy kind of look. Let's see if I find a paper that has a darker color background. If I don't let this dry too long, nope. darker than you think so that kind of gives that texture so you know there's all kinds of you know different things that you might have lying around for texture um, the one other thing that I did 
that I kind of liked. I'm not gonna use them for um, this journal, but one other thing that I would show is, um, this is more to give you, let's see, I'll do it with the dark gray, um, an idea of using other things that you can kind of press into the paint. And like I said, when Tracy did her video, it was actually kind of the reverse. She was using this to get paint onto her brayer. Maybe I'll show you. I don't think, I think I already have too much paint on this. Um, let me take some off the back of here. Use that just to get a little paint. And then what she was doing was she was taking and trying to imprint it from the reverse. So you see how that gives you a different texture. And that's great if you're doing, you know, background, just backgrounds. But I was trying to mimic the look of old walls. So this, this is why that didn't work for me. But, you know, for other things, kind of like when I was doing my, um, my just wild painting for that last journal, th this process that she did would work great for that. Just to get backgrounds, put color on any kind of random way. But the other thing I wanted to show was, uh, let's see, where's my little gears? What do I do with them? I have a little box somewhere. Oh, here. This was a lot of fun. Again, this is not for this, this project, but I took all these different little gears and things from Fox, and it just made the neatest pattern. So you just have to kind of be careful, and you're not going to really see this very well until I do the pull. But I'm just gonna make spirals. And then I had the small one. And then maybe some watch clock gears. And anything you can hold, you know, that you can Im imprint. Let's see this one. Because I'm in the dark, I can't really see what I'm doing. But we're gonna, let's see one more. Oops. Okay. I just love that. Oh, I love that. Okay, not for this journal, but I can see another grungy journal in my future that does not have a vintage theme. Okay, so I think that's it it's for my jelly plate printing for today. Um, so go make your coffee stain papers, maybe get your jelly plate out. If you don't, I'll scan these and put them in my Etsy shop for you. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.